Jesse Foster welcomes you to Father Nation, Nation. where other dads illuminate your path to become a better father. Prepare to enter into the man cave. How about a moment as a dad when you've had an aha moment, a good idea? Can you tell us about one of those times? Hmm. I was thinking about that. I think that my aha moment came from my special needs daughter. You know, we we were carrying her around. So we had twins and Alex was born and Alex and Bina and, and Alex was, you know, crawling around by the time he's one years old, maybe a little bit after he starts walking. And Bina's not, right? And and by the time two years old, Bina's getting a little bit heavy. By three and four years old, it's like carrying around a, you know, sack of potatoes. And um, she's not walking and we're confronting, is she going to be in a wheelchair forever? And yet I didn't want to stop the progress on my boys. And so I got a trampoline in the backyard because I wanted to help Alex learn how to do flips and twists to maybe eventually become a diver himself. And maybe that would happen with Ian too, although at the time he was about, you know, just short of two years old. So I got a trampoline and, and I'd have fun with Alex and Ian. And I'd save a little bit of time with Bina just to hold both of her hands and jump up and down with her. Um, but she'd laugh. And then one day, I totally stumbled upon it just for grins. I held her little hips and steadied them. And I thought, well, I wonder what would happen if I just sort of steadied her here. And I squatted down and I held her tightly. And then I let her hips go. And she took one she got what I was trying to do, right? Like, I'm, I'm trying to see, will, will she take a step? And she took one step, and she fell down, and it was a failure. But she giggled. So I thought, well, that's interesting. That, did, that wasn't harmful at all, because a lot of kids with cerebral palsy don't learn how to walk because they fall off of chairs, they get concussions, or when their parents are teaching them to walk and they let go of their hips on hard ground, they fall down and get a concussion or a big knot on their head. And yet here I was on a trampoline, she fell down and laughed because it was forgiving. There were no consequences essentially for failure. So I did it again. I steadied her hips, I let her go, she took one wobbly step. I did it about five times and then she took one and a half step. And it showed me that there was progress and that she wanted more. And so I called my wife and my wife came down to the trampoline and stood about three feet from us and put her arms wide out. Bina took one and a half steps. And we did this uh, for a couple of days. But before we knew it, we had Bina taking three steps. The, the lesson for me in this was that you have to work at a person's own cadence. You know, a lot of times we want to push our kids beyond what they're capable of being pushed. But if we sort of slow ourselves down to their cadence and what they're capable of and move in their direction, that's sort of lesson one, but also remove the consequences for failure, at least temporarily, not permanently, right? Like Bina was going to have to learn how to walk on the hard ground, but at least temporarily we could remove the consequences for failure because she was falling down on a trampoline. Once she got confident there, we put this spongy wrestling mat cover on the back of our back deck, and then we'd bring a piece of masking tape and we put it out four feet in front, and we eventually got her to four feet on this spongy ground. Again, it's not hard like the hard cement, and uh, and we got her up to like 11 steps. I have to tell you, my, the, one of the greatest moments in my entire life, Jesse, was my parents' 50th wedding anniversary where we had my parents down from New York. We had my cousins and nephews and nieces and brothers and sisters. We had about 25 people all on the deck while they watched Bina take her first steps on the trampoline, you know, early on when she was learning how to walk. The big aha for me was to that sometimes you got to remove the consequences for failure so that they can take risks in a way that's absorbable for them and they can transition as they build more confidence, you can give them more risk. So it was a great lesson 